makes sense not to you know, counsel God. Mm -hmm. So simple, but like so not. You know, it's like, okay, if you're wanting to have a, a godly relationship, it would make sense for you to seek God, God's counsel about it. But I, I feel, and this is just my opinion, oftentimes I feel like people want good people and they don't want God. You know, and they know that good people come with God. But it's like they don't necessarily want God, they just want good. You know what I mean? So it's like it may be a good person, you know, and like a good situation, but the relationship doesn't bear fruit because they don't bring God into it, you know, mm -hmm. like if that makes sense. Yeah, uh, and that's, that's the awesome part about free will, right? Mm -hmm. Like we get to choose what, what we want to do. Mm -hmm. God is not going to, um, unless you have the, you know, unless you, you give him permission, mm -hmm. he's not going to intrude you that's true. and say, uh, the no. You can't have this person. The, yeah. That's, that's the concept of free will is the fact that he can, he can choose to find good people. And a lot of people find success mm -hmm. in a relationship. That, Even that aren't believers. People yeah. are like, well, so many Christians are going to have good marriage. That's not yeah. true. There's a lot of people who get married that aren't Christians and have and good marriages. How brilliant and happy and all of that included mm -hmm. but as, as a godly person as a godly because that's the perspective of, that we're talking to mm -hmm. is finding that specific purpose that you're called for mm -hmm. and what that what god says that your purpose is and if you're talking from that perspective it becomes really important to see god and that and the advice of who you want to mm -hmm. be so um, yeah, God allows you. God gives you the choice of choosing what He wants or what you want. It doesn't really matter, mm. or what other people want. Mm. So you have the will to do that. Yeah. So it's. But if we're talking about from a perspective of godly relationship, mm -hmm. yeah, that's 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 where this becomes a specific. Yeah. Involve God. <laughs> um, so the next question is, <clears throat> what advice would you give to men who didn't have their fathers there to model? healthy relationships for them or just men who didn't have healthy relationships modeled for them in general you know i don't want to just like put it on the fathers because maybe your father was there and then your mom was psychotic or like just something because it's like um i've met your parents once before and they seem very kind and they're both still together and it's statistically shown when you've seen a healthy relationship modeled for you you're more likely to end up in a healthy relationship yourself and so for the for the men out there who may not have had that and fear that they may not be able to recreate that. Um, from your experience, like what advice or things that you saw, you know, that you observed from your parents' relationship that's, that you yourself have modeled in your relationship that you could maybe offer to like men who may not be in an environment where they have healthy relationships modeled for them? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I mean, I have very limited knowledge as far as my own experience, mm -hmm. but I can tell what, what my father did. They're still happily married. Mm -hmm. She's not psychotic. Yeah, um, <laughs> he's not my psychotic, but his dad's really nice. Uh, <laughs> I just want to say, you can see me kind of smiling as he's talking. It's mostly because I expected him to answer certain ways, and I'm just like, you know, so I don't want you guys to think like, girl, she's just laughing at her man over here. You know, <laughs> and I just like, I know he's so technical, like if you guys watch our videos, there's this certain way where we break down concepts. Mm -hmm. We're all and, like metaphysical. And then it's very oh. obvious, I think, for you guys, the way Daggy kind of breaks something down is, I don't know if you've noticed it as well, it's very different from us in some ways. I mean, that's why I wanted a man's perspective, because you and I could go back and forth all day. Yeah. And, and we make perfect sense to each other, but it's like, I, it's always healthy to bring in another perspective and to bring in like a male's perspective, because we are talking about men, you mm -hmm. know? And it's like, as a woman, I don't know everything that there is to know about men. I can pretend like I do and I act like I do, but I don't. I don't know what yeah. I'm talking about, guys, most of the time. So, yeah, yeah I just brought like one, one guy, and that's not the same Because they probably look weird, like men. smiling in the corner over here, and then he's just like, yes, yes. She's pinching him. The no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> She's over there, like, punching him back. No, I'm kidding. She's not. But, but yeah, from your, from your experience, just like advice, like, okay, like, dude, like, don't beat your girlfriend up. I don't know. <laughs> that should be obvious. <laughs> don't that should be obvious. And most of the time it is. But like the simple things, because it's like, 
it's so, I don't want to say it's like so not cool to like have a girlfriend and treat her well, but it's like, it's more often than not, it's like you have a girlfriend, you treat her okay, and then you have a side piece on the side. Like that's what's normal in our society, you know, but to really have a woman that you honor and like treat well, regardless of what everybody else around you is doing in their relationships, it's like there's gotta, there's, there's something to be said about that, you mm -hmm. know, and like how you, 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 you do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um... How, how my dad treated my mom always is, first off, with respect. Mm -hmm. But, again, since I am pursuing that, I can only talk about that. Mm -hmm. It's... I think maybe godly, I should share a little bit. A godly mm -hmm. relationship. You get me? Yeah. Um, and that's what all these I, videos are I'm about. I'm the one it's that's like, exp experienced this. You're on the receiving end. So I okay. think I definitely have seen the difference more when it comes to maybe that question with that. Yeah, name. but I, I do want to say, um, mm -hmm. as far as relationship go, I can only talk about from the perspective of a godly relationship. Yeah, and, so. and that's what these videos are about. It's about godly relationships. So it's like the, the first one was about, you know, being single and saved. And these ones are about being in a relationship and saved. So okay. I, the heathens, y'all gonna do what y'all wanna do. But I'm talking about if you like <laughs> want Jesus in your relationship. So this may not be for everybody, but it's like if you want like a godly relationship, this is what we're talking about. If we make that clear, then yeah. um, being with your woman and having a side piece doesn't apply. Because mm. it's not godly. So again. You'd be surprised. No, I'm joking. No, it's not godly, but it's not godly. It's not godly, but the people that could happen. there's so many people that are Christians and like go to church and like still like just do relationships their own way, you know. And so just so, just really being clear that we're talking about like godly relationships. So yeah, don't uh, don't do that. That's not godly. Don't do that. That, that could happen, mm -hmm. but that doesn't make it godly. Mm -hmm. So what what I saw my my father do. Um, you know, in a day-to-day -day life, is um, not only in general loving my mother the way that uh, Christ would love her, which means, you know, like the, all the definitions of love, mm -hmm. you know, unconditional, everlasting. I've, you know, they, they disagree sometimes, yeah. but I've never really seen him um, care for, we come second, mm -hmm. his children come second, because yeah. that's biblical. Yeah. You know, to him, the Lord comes first, his wife comes second, mm -hmm. my mother, and then his children, after that, his ministry of his career. Mm -hmm. So that's, he defined that in, in that relationship. So I saw him care for her. I saw him love her unconditionally. Mm -hmm. Sometimes she's unreasonable. Yeah. He loved her anyways, you know? <laughs> Sometimes, you know, he's like, okay. We have some wiggle room, guys. We can be unreasonable with the godly man. No, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's like, don't give me yeah. He said it. He said it. No, sometimes I'm joking. he's also unreasonable, yeah. and she loved him the same way again. Mm -hmm. So, um, la what does Christ say? How does Christ love the church? Mm -hmm. That's the biggest um, role model that you could ever have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's the role model my, that my father took and that I took mm -hmm. from my father is... Um, how did how did Christ love the church? Mm -hmm. How was it? How how the depth of his love was not really reachable. You get me? Mm -hmm. So the the unconditionality and the, the faithfulness for the church was not really measurable. So that's what that's why he strove for mm -hmm. my father. Mm -hmm. So and that's what I've learned <coughs> is um, you know anything around you could be dysfunctional, but mm -hmm. that solid stone that ne would never change. Mm -hmm. We're talking about from perspective of godly relationship is that's always our um, position anchor mm -hmm. so that's always where we view and adjust ourselves according to that and that's what I, I tried to do with that was um, that is specifically is to love her as Christ not the church or to love to love her as Christ would love her um, what I love about that is <coughs> you don't need a father for that you know, um, if you own a Bible, you can have Jesus as your model on how to treat your woman, you know, and, and, and follow that. And it's like you had your father, but you were still following Jesus because your father was following with Jesus, mm -hmm. you know. So even without having a physical example of what a healthy relationship looks like, through spending time in the Word, through um, <clears throat> getting closer to Jesus, like you can learn those healthy habits that it takes to maintain a healthy relationship and I know in my own personal experience like 
with God just giving me a new heart and just giving me a better ca compa capacity to love, you know what I mean? Um, I haven't seen healthy relationships really modeled for me, but I know now that I'm capable of one and it's because of my relationship with Jesus. And that's comforting to me, you know, mm -hmm. and hopefully that's comforting to you guys as well. Yeah. And um, <coughs> I think the other thing that, that, um, that could be very helpful is find someone else that has a godly relationship. Mm -hmm. You get me? Yeah, so, you guys have been so helpful, you know, being around healthy couples, you know, being around godly couples, you know, and just being around just healthy love in general, you know what I mean? If you can, if you have it available to you, if this makes a difference. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're both like, yep. <laughs> so, for our last and final question, um, could you talk to us about the importance of mentorship in your life? And I know, Val, you can elaborate more on this. Um, I? Um, I more on this. <laughs> I mean, that was her idea for the question, but it's like... Um, I, well, I know the reason I asked that question, or I wanted to ask that question to Daggy, was because I know, like... I mean, I when I was thinking mentorship, I was just thinking of like men that have counseled you, and I know Adrian has. It's important to wise counsel. You know, yeah, being around like, other wise men. And I, I know your dad has, um, and just your mom. I mean, I wasn't just thinking. I mean, I wasn't just thinking men, but like your mom has been a major like counselor in your life. In general, I noticed for me, I think. The reason I was asking that question because is because in my own family specifically, I did not grow up. I did not grow up with godly counsel, mm -hmm. so I had to go outside of my family to find counsel. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that I noticed immediately in the relation, when I um, had a when I entered into a relationship with Daggy, and I remember this so clearly. I remember we were driving. It was when we were first dating, and. Um, I, re I forgot what we were talking about, like taking risks or something and just challenges of life. And one of the things that Daddy told me, he's like, I know I can jump off a bridge or something and know that his mom, that I'm going to be okay because I have the prayer of like my mom and like wow. people that love me. And I know Daddy didn't really think much of it, but there was a lot of moments like that, that Daddy would just randomly just say it. And for me, it was just like something that just like God was zooming in and I was just like, wow, like. How does that feel like? Like, mm. what is that like? I, I don't know, you know? And I'm getting a little bit emotional, so. Yeah. <laughs> We've actually done really good. We're 45 minutes in, neither one of us cried. I'm like, oh, <laughs> Every I'm, time we do a video I'm together, like, we I'm cry. like, oh my gosh, I get a little emotional. But I noticed for Daggy, is just something that he just really has been ingrained into his life since a very young age. And God has blessed. I, I'm also been blessed. I'm not saying I don't have godly count. I think God has surrounded me with spiritual mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers sisters that like throughout my relationship and growth with Jesus I truly understand what it means to like when God says when Jesus says who is your father and mother and he's like whoever follows me like mm -hmm. God has put people in my life in different seasons to be kind of be those spiritual mothers and fathers but in Daggy I've noticed like um you know his First and foremost, his parents have been crucial in, ter in terms of, like, mentorship and, like, counsel. Like, sometimes he'll tell me, like, my mom was speaking today to me as a pastor, not as a mom. Mm. And I'm just like, well, yeah, you know? And I'm just like, <laughs> what does that feel? And then his mom is, like, like legit. Like, I've seen her pray and preach, and it's just like, oh, my gosh. You know, I mean, my, my family, they're Spanish speakers, and they've seen her preach. And they were like, I don't know what she was saying, but she was captivating. She was, it. she was captivating, and I just felt God. And I'm just like, yeah, me too. You know, so I think that's what I'm, I'm kind of asking. I think maybe Daddy doesn't necessarily think about it very much <laughs> because he's just like, it's been so much part of his life. But mm -hmm. for me, I really kind of noticed it, you know? Mm -hmm. I really was just like, what? I kind of have like a story that's like, the complete opposite mm -hmm. spectrum of that where it's like I dated somebody who I like really really loved them and wanted to be with them and our relationship was difficult because of the men he surrounded himself with mm -hmm. you know every time we would go out with him and his best friend his best friend would bring a different girl mm -hmm. and it made me feel like do you do this when I'm not around you know mm -hmm. um hanging around with men who cheat on their wives you know mm -hmm. you know even being in a relationship with his not in a relationship with his father but having his father you know 
and his parents like being divorced and things like that. So I'm like, even if you were the best man in the world, the type of men that you surround yourself with, we wouldn't make it. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have men around you who encourage you to have a, a healthy, faithful relationship. So I could be the best girlfriend in the world and it wouldn't matter because of your best friend, because of your best friend after that, because of this guy, all these men that you surround yourself by, you're only around me so much, mm -hmm. you know, there's only but so much I can do mm -hmm. outside of, you know, your company and it really made me feel defeated I'm like there's nothing I can do even if we our relationship would only work if we moved to a different state and it was just you and I mm -hmm. and it it, it, it it sucked you yeah. know so it's like the, just the importance of like having like even if they're not mentors but just surrounding yourself with like good company it makes me think of the scripture like bad company corrupts uh, uh, good manners you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So it's like, so if you are trying to be a man of God and you surround yourself with all your drug dealing friends, all your, your, your cheating friends, don't be surprised. It's like, I just don't know why I can't make things work. Well, stop hanging out with Rodney and them and you might be okay. Whoever yeah. Rodney is. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> if I you have a friend named Rodney, I'm talking about him. And yeah. I'm joking. And I think on the other side, like for me, right, like I, I guess in our, I didn't grow up right with like a, Christian family necessarily, or I did it, you know, so uh, I, I'm like, what am I saying? I did it, you know, so yeah. I know, like, I grew up sometimes hearing things like, you don't need a man, or you like, man every man, every man you meet is a dog, or all men like, cheat, or, you might as well just find you one that got money and cheat, yeah, that, or just like, make sure you're always in control, yeah, make sure you always keep a little bit of your own money on the side, yeah, I heard what uh, it was one thing that I heard that like just really stayed with me. It's like uh, it was uh, a friend of ours or, or one of our coworkers was like working on her car. I was like, dang, like you know how to fix your car? She's like, yeah, my mom told me never to depend on a man for anything. I'm like, yeah, you just, and you just can't learn just to fix your car because you want to learn to fix your car. I'm just like, yeah. dang, like just like that negativity. I'm like, man, like I. I want to be able to fully depend on a man and not be afraid that I'm like, I'm going to keep $20 in the bank just in case. Yeah, I guess the word <laughs> is like know? trust. You know, yeah. I do trust that when I do need Daggy, like he's going to help me. I still do things on my own, mm -hmm. but like I do trust that like if I need his help for something, he's mm -hmm. definitely going to be there. And he is definitely a source, I mean, in our relationship, a source of like support. And like, I do think he makes me a better person and stuff. So, um, um I'm like, do I, I don't, <laughs> he's like, go on. And I'm like, I definitely don't. <laughs> what tell, else do I do? <laughs> I definitely never tell Daggy things like, I don't need you or things like that. Because the truth is, I do need you. Like, he really helps me with my emotional self. Sometimes. And you're a strong woman, and it doesn't yeah. take anything from you to be able to be like, I need him, you yeah. know, and even with me and all my talk about my dragon, it's like, I, not only do I like want a man, it's like, of course, it's like, if I, I would need one too, you know, yeah. just for the sake of like procreation for company and all that stuff, you know, <laughs> like I need that now. Like, I'm like, well, first we're going to have sex. <laughs> um, but just we're going to bring it back, but I need one for that. But also like, because I need one. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, this one just sorry. cracked me up. It was yeah, I'm mean, like, I mean, just what? I can't do it on my own. I'm sorry. Now he's like, what? Are you blushing, baby? Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. Oh my god, my self <laughs> But the point is Thank you. Bring that, I was, that I was saying is Bring that, back. um, what was I saying? What yes. was I saying? I, I don't remember. What was the question? We're gonna bring it back. What was the question again? We were talking about needing men. <laughs> <laughs> what was the actual yeah, question? Okay. Oh, the the mentorship. we were talking about mentorship like ten minutes oh, ago. Oh, okay. So, and now we're here. Yeah, I don't know how we get to that, but I've noticed that he has like friends, even if they're not like Christian. Mm -hmm. Um, I noticed that they're always like like um. I'm not gonna name names, but you know, um, it's not. I'm not saying anything bad, but I just don't want to say their name. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, like even them, like they look up to Daggy or like, and it's interesting because Daggy sometimes doesn't like notice these things, but I hang like when I hang out with them or when I talk to them, they'll just be like, yeah, Daggy's very persistent or like he's very hardworking and mm -hmm. um, you know, they notice these things and aspects of God with him, and I'm just like, babe, did you know your friends think this of you? And he's and these are not his non-Christian friends, right? Mm -hmm. And then he's like, what? I didn't know that. I'm like, see, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. But um, even his non-close non-Christian friends, I notice, um, you know, are good men. You know, they're mm -hmm. not like over here talking about like I'm gonna cheat or something like that. You mm -hmm. know, but 
Yeah, I think it's very logical to think that the information that you're constantly exposed to mm -hmm. kind of influences in your uh, your decisions. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's not bad to think that. Mm -hmm. So if you're if you're constantly being exposed to the kind of man that you don't want to be, change that situation. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, as okay. far as having mentor or having advice, of course, um, I'm, I'm going to have. Uh, we need all of us need godly advice. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> you know, I agree. We're so limited in our knowledge, and and we're so like um, limited in our way of thinking, especially when because we're young. Mm -hmm. We're gonna need godly advice because we don't have many of the answers. Yeah. So and, and that's biblical to say that you know. You, you're going to need mentorship or advice. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like Val said, my my mom is a. I think that's what we learned. But she's an actual pastor. Mm -hmm. um, and which uh, is helpful. Yeah, so <laughs> that's why I say like she was a He's pastor. He's a pastor's today. kid, by the way. <laughs> um, yeah, so she's a great source of advice mm -hmm. and mentorship for me. So is my dad, um, and I also have a few like kind three of other dads. But yeah, a few other godly um, yeah. father figures. A multitude of counsel. That you know that that care that truly care about me and that yeah. are willing to tell me exactly what I need to hear without mm -hmm. really worrying about my feelings. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the other important thing is um, when you know when a mentor or a, a somebody that gives me godly advice is not worried about my feelings because mm -hmm. they don't matter. Mm -hmm. So you, you get me? Like if, if a person that is giving me advice is wor being worried about how that's going to make me feel, mm -hmm. he's not going to give me the best advice. Mm -hmm. So to, to me and to them, <coughs> it doesn't matter how that's going to make me feel, but mm -hmm. some things that I need to hear, I need to hear. Yeah. So a lot of the times those advices have come in a crucial time and they made the difference in a lot of difficult situations when I was in. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's, that's very important. Yeah. And it, it's also important because of the previous question we talked about. Mm -hmm. If you don't have, um, you know, if you're in a situation where you don't have a lot of father figure or a, a, that a father to draw from, and I know that how important that is, and I am, I think the Lord and I'm blessed in that. Mm -hmm. um, but if you if you don't have that, that mentorship is gonna be another crucial way that you can get that is. If you have a, a God, God fearing mentor mm -hmm. that is um, sort of that went through the stuff that you're going through and is going to give you um, the pitfalls and mm -hmm. what you know what the Lord says in those situations, that's going to be helpful. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it is important to have godly advice and mentorship from the people that went through that and uh, that you respect. Yeah, cool. I'll um, even say that, like, I know because if you guys don't notice. We're a, what is it? Bicultural relationship? Biracial? Uh, I don't know. But we have two different cultures. Multiracial. Multiracial. Interracial. Interracial. Yeah, we're yeah, interracial. we're like bi. Yeah. <laughs> multiracial. Yeah, we're a, a multiracial. Mm -hmm. Interracial relationship. Interracial. Interracial relationship. So we have like um, Latino Christians that are pouring into our lives, and like of course his family is Ethiopian. And I noticed for me, like, talking to his sisters and, like, their perspectives mm -hmm. as Ethiopian Christians and, like, him talking to, like, you know, strong Christian Latinos has been helpful for our relationship because it's been helpful to help us understand each other, um, understand our needs, and um, just love each other in the midst of our cultural differences. Mm -hmm. You know, I think cultural differences can be something that's very difficult for some people to navigate if their communication is poor. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, I think we have, we both, um, you know, are good with communication, but having that extra mentorship and like help is always helpful for us so that we can, they can help us work through any, any differences that we might be having um, through the perspective of God. And, and yeah, I think that's been very helpful for us in that way as well. Takes a village, guys. It does. It takes a village it to get a village. to the altar um but yeah so we've been at it for almost an hour now so i'm gonna just wrap things up is, is there anything um any other things that you wanted to add or val that you guys wanted to personally discuss um any last little tidbits anything that comes to mind for the men if you could just like have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a guy that's watching right now and whatever the lord's putting on your heart like i don't know no pressure but if you could just 
tell them to, to wrap it up, you know? Yeah, I'm like, so talk to this particular person, look in the camera, and tell them what they need. But you yeah, need just, to cry, babe. Yeah, if you need to cry. This is a safe space. I tend to get emotional. Yeah. yeah. If you need to cry, this is a safe space. And Jesus, it's yeah. for you yeah. and you and So just a last, a last little, little word. If not, then um, you can... Pray us out. Maybe you should pray, pray us out. Well, yeah. got this love. Yeah. Why don't you two pray together like a tag team prayer? Uh, you can lay I, hands on. I believe him. <laughs> <laughs> so you, why don't you give us a closing word and then you can pray us out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Compromise. Look at that. <laughs> Again, I, this, there's not there's not much I can say mm -hmm. about it because there's very little that I know, mm -hmm. and I know. Some it. humble. No, it's not that. <laughs> you see, stop. You're being humble again. No, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it benefited me to, to seek God in, mm -hmm. in every aspect. Mm. And I, I think that's the only thing I can talk about is what, what I went through. Mm -hmm. it's, it has been a great benefit to me, my accomplishments and what I, the, the little work that I did um, to lean on God and to seek God. It was a great benefit. And, and you know, it was a virtue to me to 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 pursue God and to be pursued by Him. Mm -hmm. So um, again, it's it's a curiosity thing. Um, if you you know, if any man, godly or otherwise, if if any man that is kind of on the fence is thinking about it, to me, at my home, it was greatly beneficial, and it was at times dire. To lean on God, mm -hmm. and it has brought such great value to my life to lean on God and to pursue Him, and to be pursued by Him. Mm -hmm. That anywhere that I can go, if you tell me, oh, tell, uh, you know, um, closes with one thing. That's the only thing I could say mm -hmm. is, if you're curious and if you're really on the fence, or if you're saying, why is this not working for me? Try it. Mm -hmm. Try pursuing Him and try, try living in a. In a Try attempting to live, I should say, because we all yeah, it's we're always all shorter, shorter. a lifelong attempt until yeah, we so get until we see you know? Jesus. Yeah, and what is attempting? That's what I found, you know. Mm -hmm. um, God was there in my attempt. Mm -hmm. God, God was there in my failure, mm -hmm. and my failure didn't stop me mm -hmm. because God was there to fill out the gaps. So um, try attempting it, mm -hmm. and try inviting the Lord in that in that space that you think you may not be available, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, in the space that you think you are the weakest in. Invite the Lord and see the kind of stuff that He will do. So um, that would be the closing thing. So if you're if you're curious or if you're going through the some of those things, um, you know, pursuing God in an active manner has benefited me a great deal, and um, that's the only thing that I could that I could say. That's awesome. Thank you. Pray us out. Yeah, and now Don's gonna take us home. Hit, hit okay. Home run. I will. Um, Jesus, I just thank you for today, God, this video. Um, yeah, God, I, I think I just reaffirm what Daggy has just said. Like, Jesus, you're just, we don't pursue just because of just the value that you give us, God, but you're just so good, God. You are just loving. You are kind. You love us in just such a personal and intimate way um and make us feel so known and seen by you and at the same time god you challenge us and encourage us god to pursue these amazing dreams and um, impact people and encourage them through different skills and talents and ideas god um yeah jesus you are just so irreplaceable and just so just crucial to um, a life that's full of life and joy and just abundance god so we just pray that, um, yeah, people would just see that and, and draw near to you and know that every good thing that we have and even our relationships um, or anything else, God, just really comes from you and is just truly filled with so much life because you're in the middle of it, God. So we give you praise and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I'm actually going to say a word of prayer mm -hmm. um, just because this is going to be the, the last video in the relationship series that we've been in for about a month now. And um, yeah, so dear Heavenly Father, I just want to say thank you so much for putting it on Val and I's heart to um, just really talk about these vulnerable subjects, Lord. Um, we may, you know, laugh and joke and all these things, but these are experiences that we've all had to get throughout life, Lord. You know, myself, Daggy, and, uh, and Val, you know, we've had to go through our different experiences to be sitting here in one another with the wealth of knowledge that we, we have. 
wealth, you know, of knowledge. The little bit of knowledge that we have, Lord, but even you just allowing us to share that with whoever it is that wants to listen. God, I thank you for that. I thank you so much that Val and I had started this relationship series with her being a girlfriend and now lord your promises have come to pass and she's engaged lord i pray ahead of time for their marriage that it'll be one that lasts forever there'll be one that's happy and healthy lord and that it'll be one that continues to bring you glory starting from um even something as simple as this youtube video lord you're using them already to just um have a ministry together and i just want to say thank you for that i thank you for everybody who has watched this series i pray that they've learned a lot lord i pray that they'll grow in this area and that they'll also surrender their love lives to you jesus let us know that we can trust you to complete our love stories and you're creative and you're never going to run out when it comes to us and lord i pray for the men um just as much as i pray for the women lord those of us who've been hurt who've had our trust broken who just feels like um that love and happiness is not our portion jesus i know that that's not true lord and that you won't hold back anything that's good from us jesus and so i just pray that those of us who have lost hope that you'll restore it father god those of us who've had our, our trust destroyed that you'll uh just mend it father god and repair it and put it back to how it is that you want it to be lord and i just pray father god that we're all end up people that are in your will for us lord and that will um all pursue godly relationships Jesus that will bring you honor and glory and that um, just these messages will produce fruit Jesus and that you'll draw who, who needs to hear it and just um, just really be with us Lord as we try to date in 2019 Jesus and help us to want to do it in a way that is just pleasing and encouraging and just kind so I just want to say thank you for this opportunity and I pray that you'll just be with us all and Heal us in all our broken places, Father God, and give us a new heart so that we can love each other in a way that's pleasing to you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Bye, guys. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can end it.